remember one day when my son was little. He came home from school and told me that his teacher had hit him. I still remember the crushing pain that overwhelmed my heart. As if someone had taken it and squeezed the life out of it. It affected me even more than it did my son. I thought about it all day and had trouble sleeping that night. First thing the next day, I went to my son's school and gave the headmaster a good piece of my mind. At the time, I confess, I didn't think this was an overreaction. Until I began my journey of introspection, I didn't realize what internal forces lay behind it. But when I thought about it, it seemed clear to me that many of our reactions are totally out of proportion to the events that provoke them. And when asked for an explanation, the answer usually has something to do with past accumulations that were finally triggered by some small event. But what are past accumulations? Where in the depth of human consciousness do they hide? And what causes them to erupt? Many studies suggest that these accumulations are emotional pains and other negative feelings that not only build up from the past, but remain alive in our cells as a latent source of negative energy. In his book, A New Earth, Eckhart Tolle calls this negative energy the pain body. For most people, it starts to accumulate in childhood from painful experiences that are not curated by an adult We are usually unaware that the resulting negative emotions remain alive and dormant within us. I realized that the exaggerated reaction to my son's situation was nothing but the release of my own pain body. It was a reflection of the pain built up when I was my son's age and experienced cruel treatment from an unjust teacher. That teacher was not punishing to discipline, but to vent his own pain body. He did not realize that every time he beat a student, he planted the seed of a new pain body that would grow over that child's life. The pain body may manifest itself in children in a variety of ways. Stress, sadness, moodiness, withdrawal, violent and destructive behavior. It can even show up as a physical illness. How many children have witnessed the drama between their parents in family disputes and conflicts? These children become carriers of a heavy emotional burden that will affect their lives if they do not learn how to recognize and cope with it. The pain body is a poisonous and contagious energy, and children, by their pure nature, have the ability to absorb all emotions around them with ease. 
the pain body for each child develops in accordance with the type of negative experiences they are exposed to. carries a pain body but we have different awareness of it if you find that your reactions are well beyond what a given situation calls for then realize it is the pain body inside of you fueled by your own ego Why does the pain body linger and not just die over time? What keeps it alive and what for? I have arrived at the conclusion that the ego clings to its sad story because it wants to appear to itself and others as a victim. By doing so, it can relieve itself of any responsibility or blame. The pain body doesn't die because it thrives on events and responses that awaken or revive it. Blame and anger fan the flame of negative emotions, reinforcing the sad story which in turn justifies my irrational reactions. After it flares up, perhaps in a few hours or days, the pain body subsides and returns to its dormant state until the next trigger. But not before leaving us drained and vulnerable to a variety of illnesses. Our pain body can unconsciously provoke the pain body in others. All that is required is to simply be around the negative energy field. So it should come with no surprise that those carrying a heavy load of pain body find themselves in constant quarrels and conflicts. How many of us have witnessed a public fight that broke out with no clear justification? Oftentimes, after the fight, neither party is able to rationally explain what happened. The same goes for many of the fights between married couples. How can we treat this pain body? Researchers have given a simple answer. Consciousness. Realizing that your pain body is part of your ego breaks down the false association of the self with the pain body so our sad stories no longer remain a part of our identities. The 
the light of consciousness eradicates the darkness that is folded within the pain body, allowing the real self to emerge. Only then we are able to differentiate between the event and our reaction to it. We become conscious of the feelings and emotions that spring from the pain body and distort our view of reality. In his book, Eckhart Tolle observes that if someone from a different planet were to visit Earth today, one of the things that would strike them is the fact that millions of human beings pay money to watch people inflict pain and even death on one another and call it entertainment. This observation shook me to the core. How true indeed, an entire industry based on sex and violence. An entire industry whose sole purpose is to fuel humans' addiction to misery. Such images serve to renew the pain body within us. There are pain bodies that ride. Pain bodies that produce and pain bodies that pay to watch. The collective pain body thrives on the pains that humanity has endured throughout history. World wars, genocides, tyranny, rape, torture and slavery we only need to look at the news to find a constant reminder of the extent of human tragedy. Sadness surrounds me as I think about the world today. It was as if a dark cloud covered the rays of the sun. What is the solution? What can I do? I decided to start with myself and to participate in awakening others' consciousness. For every awakened consciousness is an elimination of a pain body. And with every pain body that departs this world, the power of the collective consciousness increases and the burden of suffering on humanity decreases. <laughs>